One of the number one questions I get of all time is, Josh, how do you get your knife so sharp? And when I say sharp, I mean... Like, like that. But there's only one way we can do that, and that is at the greatest knife shop in America, so let's go. Welcome to Bernal Cutlery, San Francisco's premier cutlery shop. Here we are, is it? Oh. That's gonna be my, that's oh. my thing. Josh. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Good choice on the name. Josh and Josh, that's right. So we're with Josh Donald, Bernal Cutlery, San Francisco. To me, I think you guys are the kings of knives, which is why we're here, to flex on everybody. If we're gonna start with sharpening, the first thing we need to talk about is what kind of steel should a beginner sort of begin with? Many people might find themselves already with knives that they want to sharpen. Probably they're dull if they have them. A lot of people are gonna, you know, be working with European stainless steels, like this French uh, chef's knife here. This is a Japanese stainless. And then there's all the carbon steels and hand forged knives. You look at this incredible array of knives and it can be really daunting and people will just sort of default to, you know, a name brand knife. The way you sharpen your knife is gonna be pretty much the same for whatever steel you choose. Some steels are going to hold their edge longer, will require you know, sharpening less often. Others uh, will sharpen easier. So whoever you buy your knife from should be able to tell you what the sharpening is like. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. So then let's, uh, let's walk these people how to, let's walk these people on how to sharpen your knife. Do you have a dull knife? Where did it go? Oh. Oh. That's how to store a knife. Just put it in a drawer. Oh, and just let it kind of, Clang around, around, clang and bang. Yeah, put some other clang stuff in there too. Yeah, that's looking good. So this is the first thing you want to notice is that, there we go, that's that's not too bad. Let's it look is at... a February tomato, it does great with a dull knife. Yeah, I think we go ahead and start sharpening, yeah? Very sharpen? You don't need that, do you? Or Calipers? Yeah. No, do do? these are stupid. They're stupid, who uses calipers <laughs> anyway? And these are Japanese whetstones that are soaked in water. You have coarse, medium, and fine grit. Stone is the coarsest one that we got in our lineup. This is 220 grit, quite coarse. There's 400 in there as well. Here in this bin, we have 1,200, 1,000, and then there's our fine stones here, 6,000 and 8,000. These ones have been soaking for uh, about 30 minutes. The coarse stone has a large particle, which removes a lot of metal. Medium stones, a little less metal removal. And then the fine stones, very, very light metal removal. So they're essentially polishing the edge. Do how dull the knife is would determine which stone you would start with. So we'll start with a 220 stone. We're Assume that this is a dull, dull knife. We're gonna start with a pinch grip. From our pinch grip, thumb goes in the heel. Four finger goes onto the spine. These three fingers should be getting a good grip onto the handle and your wrist should be locked. You don't want to have a bent wrist either one of these two directions. So the knife should be about 45 degrees to the stone. And then the angle of the edge on the stone is real important. We're going to be sharpening at somewhere around 15 degrees. I don't think that anybody freehand sharpening can really tell you exactly what their angle is. Two quarters oftentimes for chef's knives. This is kind of inaccurate, but real useful because it usually gives you uh, about what your angle should be. So edge of the quarters, edge of the knife. We're gonna have to take them off there to sharpen. So don't let this finger drag on the stone. Two fingers from our secondary hand are gonna come down. We're gonna kind of bend our fingers, use the tips of our fingers, and we're gonna come straight back and forth over the stone. So we're starting in the heel and going straight back and forth. Ring, pinky, and thumb up out of the way. If you have them curled up in your palm, as you start to work, they'll kind of relax. And then if you slip, you can cut yourself. So keep those fingers up so that if you slip, you don't uh, snag those. We're gonna be running off of the center line of the stone walk along the sidewalk and not veer off into the street. These fingers are going to stay over the stone while we're working. Don't let them come over the end. There's a guillotine that's formed at the end here. And if your finger falls off, it's less fun. So to work up the blade, we're gonna take tiny steps with that hand on the blade. One finger comes up, next one comes to meet it. So in slow motion here, one finger comes up. 
Next one slides up to meet it. As we do this, the handle is moving further away such that these fingers always stay over the center. So it'll look like this as you work. Each uh, grit has its own sponge, so we don't uh, introduce the grit onto our towel that we're gonna use to dry the blade. Yucky. So now that's the outside of the blade. So we have the outside and the inside. The inside, we're gonna sharpen by switching hands. Same grip, and I have a locked wrist. Previously, I had two fingers coming down. However, when I'm holding with my secondary hand, I'm going to be pushing and controlling the movement with this hand now. So I'm introducing my thumb into it. Straight back and forth over the center of the stone. So I'm pushing with the hand that's on the blade. With my left hand that's holding the knife, my wrist is locked, but my elbow and shoulder are loose so that the knife follows. This is still where the, the control is happening. This guy's really just holding our angle. The curved tip of a chef's knife or a lot of other knives provides a little bit of a challenge to keep the same angle. What we're going to do is lift the handle as we come towards ourselves and lower as we come out. It's pretty simple, just remember that you're lifting up the handle along with your arm. So don't use your wrist. So knife, hand, arm are all one fused unit. You'll hear this noise, that little swish. So I've worked each side. This is where I might start feeling a little roughness form. There's uh, a little flange of metal, a little overhang that will form, that will form a, a little burr. And that's our indication that we've started our process of sharpening, we have a new edge, and then we can then refine it. This coarse one has done its job, and it can go back into its bath. So, and this is like if you need to like, you're, you're removing a lot of metal, you're like really resetting the yeah, edge. Yeah, you wanna get that, you wanna get your work done fast. So now we'll go to the medium stone, and these are the ones that you'd be using most often. Like, you wanna maintain that angle from every point of the knife. Yes. You don't ever wanna change that. No, and that's why, that's, uh, maintaining that angle is a lot of why I like to have the edge facing. There's lots of different ways to, to get to a sharp knife, so it's not to say those are wrong. Uh, I just added it to- So you don't need a ton of water on top. I always, no. I used to put, I always put like a, I gotta put a lot of water on mine, not gonna lie. No, we're not letting the, the tip of the knife lead the way. So if we get a nice long stroke along the whole length of the stone, and it's a lot easier to maintain our angle, than if we do lots of short, long strokes, not short strokes. Nobody likes short strokes. Oh, well, There's a time and place for it, but that's, that's, that's a different video. Coming uh, soon. Uh, our fine stones, so this is 6,000 and 8,000. The, the finer, the, the polish, it's not necessarily the better the edge. <laughs> so now that we've... Uh, we've Sorry, say that again, I just said ass clap. We should not yeah. <laughs> include that. <laughs> <laughs> This is a little um, Nagra stone, a little dressing stone. This is going to raise a mud and smooth the surface of the stone. We're talking about, right? Like we switched through so many different stones. It's like people get so crazy about this, but really the only most important thing to understand is just the technique of actually just sharpening the knife. Once you yeah. understand that, you can play with all the different kinds of stones. You I think the, the most difficult thing is keeping a consistent angle. Yeah. And even if you do this badly, you're not gonna ruin your knife. You might temporarily disable it if you're really bad, but the benefits of, of doing this, even if you do it somewhat poorly, are, are way better than doing nothing. So the last thing is to strop, and this is a this is a cork strop here. Make sure your, your table is nice and... Yep, make sure there's no grit on the knife when you do this. This goes onto the edge of your work surface, and then we're just pulling. Is that the same angle? Yep, okay. same angle that yeah. you sharpen on. In Inglorious Bastards, where he's like standing there, leather stropping his, uh, with his belt, or you could. But it's not, it's, yeah, it same, looks it's, cool, it's but it's analogous. not quite as effective. I like it flat like this. Usually half a dozen strokes on the uh, strop, and the burr is removed, and it is done. And there'll be different ways to test it. So it cuts paper, shapes hair, or sticks to a fingernail, or cuts a orchid floating in a mountain stream. Food is ultimately the best test because yeah. you probably aren't eating a lot of paper and hair. I actually ate hair uh, while we were traveling. Came out of the air vent in the car. And I will say that the texture of the hair was, it was not from somebody's hair. Cut the bottom off, right? Right, look at that. Right through here, right? Cut down. So that it, it's through, right? It didn't, it didn't, we're not cutting all the way through and we're just gonna turn, cut around and unroll this as we're cutting. It's a lot easier to do these thin slices. Here, why don't you show the camera what you're doing there? Very nice. 
very nice. It takes a while, but eventually it'll just go. Yeah, it should, when you're eating a carrot, you should feel nothing but pure pain. We all haven't eaten and we're like, this carrot is the most <laughs> amazing carrot I've ever had in my life. It's 11 a.m. Uh, the stone is gonna get worn away, away from being completely flat. What was that? So we draw an X over our stone. This will let us know where the low spots are. That's the low spot. Flatten the rest of the stone. It actually helps the stone last longer. Keeps our work more accurate. <laughs> you don't want to sharpen your knives. You don't want to flex on your friends because you can sharpen your knives or seem scary to your uh, future significant other. Anyway, long story short, this is how you sharpen your knife. Josh, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming back too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate you, you. Oh man, what did he do to these? They're sharp, I swear. <laughs> well, actually, I haven't sharpened that in a while. Wait, don't look at that. But do you want to know what I want you to look at? B-roll. <laughs>